Is the carbon tax actually effective? Is it actually <laughs> working? What do we know? So I'll just start by saying uh, we collect a lot of data on emissions, right? So you can go and look at Statistics Canada or Environment Canada, and you can see the emissions levels at particular facilities, like how many greenhouse gases they're producing. You can look and see what they are going back over time at the level of a province or a country. Uh, we can look at fuel consumption data. So we have lots, we're swimming in data, uh, but we can't look at that data and figure out directly from the data if the carbon tax is working. And that sounds a bit counterintuitive, but um, what we're trying to do when we're, we're asking the question, is the carbon tax working? What we'd like to do is compare the emissions that you're showing in that figure, you know, what our, what our greenhouse gas emissions are at, you know, maybe it's at the facility level or a household level or the province or country level with what they would have been if we didn't have a carbon price. And so we're trying to compare the actual emissions with some imaginary counterfactual uh, emissions for you know what they would have looked like if there was no carbon price in place. And, and hopefully you can see that that's not something we could just look at the data and, and see because we don't have another Canada where they, you know, there wasn't a carbon tax applied to compare to. Okay, so are you saying, like, just so I, and I really want to keep, I, I will be in charge of dumbing this down because I'm very good at right. that. Uh, so you could say, well, listen, like, industry is growing, the population is growing, you know, there's there's all these trends that are contributing to the fact that, you know, the numbers here at Canada.ca show that between 1990 and 2021, over that 30-year period, Canada's greenhouse gas emissions increased by 14%. Uh, but but the premise is they may have increased by 25% without exactly. a carbon tax? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is exactly the same. This is not unique to the carbon price. Let's just say that. You know, any intervention we make, we can't just look at the data and see if it's effective. Let me give you other examples. We can't tell if universal health care makes us healthier by looking at health data. We can't tell if spending too little or too much on national defense makes us safer. Uh, we can't tell if having a free trade agreement with the U.S. makes us trade more. It's the same in any case. We can look and see what our trade data is now or our mortality data is now, but we can't see what it would have been if we didn't have the free trade agreement or if we didn't have uh, you know, uh, expenditures on national defense or a single-payer health care system. For that, we have to like imagine what the counterfactual would have been without those interventions. So the carbon price is no different than any other big intervention in that we can't just look at the data directly and see the impact of the carbon tax. Uh, we, we've got an interesting question here from Garth, and, I, and I, I kind of appreciate how he phrases it. He says, I just want to know how come eight out of 10 Canadians, and this is, this is referencing the number that the prime minister puts in front of people, including on this show. He says, I just want to know how come eight out of 10 Canadians are better off from the carbon tax, but eight out of 10 Canadians seem to want it gone. He says there there seems to be some right. confusion. Okay, I think we're that's going in a different well, direction on this question. But I, I, I kind of like I that. I want to get back to the other one. Okay, I'm we, not finished with the other one. You take but. this wherever you want to go. But <laughs> I, I want I don't want to ignore Garth. But let's just put that on the shelf for one second. Garth, we'll get back my, to your my, question. <laughs> my answer for the uh, for the for the first part, which is, you know, we can't just look at the data directly and see what the um, what the impact of the carbon tax has been, just like any other big intervention. So we've got to use like some proxies. We've got to look at uh, the data in different ways. And I'd say there's two big ways that uh, that people have gone about looking at the data to try to figure out if the carbon tax has been effective. Um, one of them is that they try to make, you know, we can't we can't see this unobservable counterfactual, what, what, what Canada would have looked like without a carbon tax, but we can try to look at situations where there is this kind of counterfactual available. And so let me give you an example. Imagine we've got a firm that happens to be regulated by a carbon tax, and we can find another firm that produces the same product, serves the same market, but for whatever reason doesn't happen to be, um, be um, targeted by a carbon tax. And that gives us a really nice kind of example or a, a situation where we can try to tease out what the impact of the carbon tax is by looking at these two firms. And if we can do that, you know, in for lots and lots of firms, then we can get a sense of what the carbon tax might have have done in terms of those firm emissions. And that's certainly something that researchers have done. They've done lots of studies of firms that look very similar, except that one's been targeted by a carbon tax and the other hasn't. And in those studies, it looks like carbon prices have been quite effective in driving down emissions. That even at relatively low levels of carbon pricing, let's say $50 a ton and less, we're seeing the firms that get targeted by carbon prices 
with emissions of somewhere between 10 and 15 or even 30 percent lower than firms that don't get targeted by carbon taxes. What do you say to your buddy? You have the same buddy that I do and and we're all out at the pub together and he's the one guy and he means well and he's a good dude and he's not an idiot and he's not a troll and he's not trying. He, yeah. he, but he but he really just he looks at and he looks at you in the eye and he says, but look what China's doing. Look what India is doing right now. He says, you got to be kidding me. This just it doesn't you know, it's 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 insignificant what we're doing. It's 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 almost immeasurable. What do you say to that buddy of yours? This is the crux of the climate problem. What each one of us does is insignificant to the climate. And when you add it all up, we're blowing through our carbon budgets and we're going to have a world that is inhospitable. Uh, and so, I mean, the, the, this is what we sometimes call the common property resource problem that each, you know, that each of us uh, doesn't think about the whole when we make our decisions. And you can, you can take that to the country level as well. Um, and uh, and I think it's it's the the real issue with the climate problem. And to me, the the way that we address it, you know, if we if we all take that position, if we all take the position that you know every other country's uh, is is kind of uh, emitting as usual, and and we don't want to be the sucker that that produces emissions while no one else does, that is effectively saying we have decided not to solve the climate problem.